So in this passage, we see about how sin enters our world. And it's this desire where we're searching for something that can fill our souls, but we're not able to find it. Adam and Eve lost that original innocence, that original relationship with God, because they, they couldn't trust Him. And ultimately, they couldn't trust each themselves. If you, I don't know if you caught it, but the serpent said, did God really say to you? Like, first of all, trusting, like, maybe God isn't trustworthy, and B, maybe you got it wrong. And so, God, so the, 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 the evil one tricks us in that way. He tricks us to, to try to get, it, to, to get us to lose hope. And God could have said, oh my gosh, they just messed up, but he doesn't. And instead, he promises someone who's going to, you know, crush the head of the serpent. We see that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. We call this the proto-evangelium, meaning the first good news. So God is so adamant that he wants us for himself, he wants us to be in a relationship with him, that he'll do anything to get it. And in fact, the whole Bible really talks about how God is just seeking to bring us into relationship with him. In Genesis, um, or in the in later in scripture, God tells us that he has come for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever may believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So God entered into this, into this masterpiece that he created. The artist becomes part of the creation, part of his artwork. So he, they, he could show us the way to live. He could be our model for us. He could save us from sin. He could reveal God's love for us. So Jesus, who is God, becomes man to save us from sin. And ultimately, he does it so we can be in relationship with God and become holy ourselves. We can become like him. God, um, God just loves us so much that he would do anything. So there's a story that kind of illustrates this, where a farmer who didn't believe in God was you know, always like, how could Jesus really, if he was God, become man? He never could understand that until one day his barn caught on fire. And he was trying to get the animals out and he got most of them out but he had some birds that were in there and they would fly up to the roof the the rafters and he couldn't get them to come out and he was so frustrated and he's like they're gonna die and they don't realize it and so he's like if only I could become a bird and show them the way out and that's when he all of a sudden realized why God became man he wanted to show us the way back to him he wanted to show us the way to salvation. And so that's why Jesus became man, is to die for us. And in fact, I would say that's his greatest masterpiece. Jesus dying on the cross reveals the love of the Father in a way that nothing else could. He is saying, I love you to the end. He could have just dropped one, one drop of blood and he would have saved us. But instead, he gave his entire life. There's nothing he wouldn't do. There's nothing he wouldn't give because he already gave it all. And he can't love you more and will not love you less. I mean, can you love, can God love you more than putting himself on the cross and dying for us? No. So that is like the whole story of the artist who loves his artwork so much that he'll save it. He's not distant. He's desiring to be in a relationship with you. And in fact, the fact that he rose from the dead kind of just shows that he really is who he is. And just an FYI, for 2,000 years, people have been willing to die for the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. It's pretty amazing. And in fact, that's why the apostles died, is because they refused to say that he didn't rise from the dead. So they put him to death, a lot of them, because of their belief in Jesus Christ as Lord who died on the cross and rose from the dead. If they were lying or if they were, weren't sure about it, I don't think they'd be willing to die. So we're on pretty, ground, pretty, pretty firm ground when we talk about how God will do anything to bring us back into relationship with Him. And it's through this cross and through His resurrection that He has set us free, that He is the Savior of the world. And finally, my parting thoughts are like, if, if this is all true, something to ponder would be, 
what if this is true then what does it mean for me I'm going to be praying for you and I hope you have some great conversation.